Now we're going to talk about participants, quick attendance, and chat. So let's start with the participant icons. Um, you can see here I am. And the reason you can tell that's me, you see that square? That means I'm a moderator. Okay, so I have powers. Um, you can see right now that my microphone is muted. And there's a reason for that because I've got it on my Surface Go and it could probably um, go kind of crazy. So just echoing. So you got to make sure if you're using another device, actually, I can just fix it by making sure my Surface Go is completely muted and then it won't be a problem. Okay. Um, so you would want to mute your iPad if it's in, uh, for that. Okay. Now this one is a guest. It has says a G on it. And you can see that currently this one is in listen only mode. Now, if I leave audio on my tablet, which is you what I usually do, in this conference. Uh, it said I'm the only person, but all I did was leave the audio. So if you see a little white circle there, that means they're not listening and they don't have a mic. All right. If you see a you green, see how that went from red to green, then that means that, that the mic is on. All right. And I can actually go to listening. So let me go ahead and do that again on my uh, tablet. And you can see now the little green headphones. Okay. Here's the cool thing, by the way, I'm going to do something on my tablet and I'm going to do what's called setting my status. And I can actually raise my hand, see how it turned into a little hand. I'm not sure you'd think that would kind of push it up or down. Um, and honestly, if I had kiddos raising their hands this way, not so sure, but you could do other nice stuff with it, like um, happy, sad. You can sell, set a little happy face there. Um, so how do you do it? How do the students do it? They see the same thing you do. All right. See a way. So actually, I probably could use that a little bit more. Um, confused, sad, happy, applaud. And I probably would be doing applaud because I'm the teacher, right? Although that's kind of cool to have your students do it. And then you can also just clear the status so it goes back to its normal. Now, if I make the person, uh, I can lock viewer settings. So let me show you the universal settings. And this is the default that is on our classroom. I had never really played with this screen before. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So what's going on here? So shared webcam is unlocked. So that means they can share their webcam and I can see the webcams of the students, but the other students can't see the webcam. So I'm going to kind of see if my students are interested in that. Um, they currently know that if they turn on their webcam, I'm usually report recording sessions. So I will warn you that if they are sharing their webcams and you are recording the session, you'll see their webcams on the recording. So just an FYI, I like to be upfront with my students. Um, so I don't know that many of them will be doing this, but apparently I can actually make it so they can see the other students. We'll have to explore that. Uh, sharing the microphone. So it defaults. So students do share their microphone. Although if you have it like that, then they won't get that uh, microphone question. And you can have them do public chat. You can actually have them do private chat. Don't recommend. Probably a bad idea um, since we have to kind of monitor them. And there are some shared notes that I'll go over uh, later if we have time. And they can actually access those as well. I'm going to unlock that actually. Uh, and currently it defaults to see other viewers in the users list. So they can see the same list of names that everybody else does. Okay. So. What does it look like to the student if a student turns on their webcam? So I'm over here and I'm a student or really a guest. And I'll explain that in a sec. And I turn on my webcam. Now you have me in stereo. Oh my. See? Okay. So you can see there's, there's my um, Surface Go and this is the camera right there. Okay. So, um, that's what I would see. So I, I do have some students that turn on the webcam. And if you look at the recordings, you can see their face on the webcam. Okay. Um, so that's lock viewer settings and the webcams. Now give presenter. I kind of showed that to you earlier. So I can make someone a presenter. If they're a presenter, they are still a viewer. And what does that do? Basically, it just gives me the tools. It does let me move through the slides and do the lessons. The only thing that I wouldn't be able to do, I can upload things. So it gives me pretty much the same tools that you had. 
Um, but if I'm like on my tablet and I don't have the file that I need, then it would be, okay, maybe I'll have it uploaded from here. So something to keep in mind. Uh, moderator. So what's a moderator? Now a moderator can see other web uh, webcams. And actually if I uh, promote someone to a moderator, so where, when would I do this? Um, if I want everyone to, actually, I guess I could do that. No, they see other webcams. Uh, my club meetings, my officers, I would probably want to make them moderators or actually just enable webcams for my students who want to turn it on. That would probably be easier. But if you want them to have more of the presentation power, moderators would be a good way to go. All right. So play with that one lightly. And as I learn more, I'll let you know. So I'm going to demote myself to viewer. Oh, inviting guests. Okay. So if you look here in this public chat section, um, there, first of all, there are nice tutorial videos here. Um, you can invite a guest to a meeting. So I do this all the time. Okay. I'm the only person who can see this. And if you wonder how I do the tutorials where I allow students to join, what happens is I just click on that, invite a guest to the meeting, and it comes up with this screen every time. I can actually, when I'm sharing a link, on my remind for my sessions. In fact, I'll, when I start a regular asynchronous tutorial session, I just copy that link and I paste it in my remind and pretty much anybody can join me for tutorials who has access to that remind. Okay. Now I can also email an invite. So this is how I got myself on because I haven't been able, I haven't really tried to be, I think I've tried to be the teacher on here and here at the same time, I think it, it chokes up. So I'll email my personal email, right? And then it will actually send me uh, an invite, but I've already invited myself. So that's all right. I don't need that right now. Uh, I also had one student who was newly enrolled. And so what I would do with that student is I would, until they got used to my system um, and they weren't like, they weren't even on Schoology. So I could actually invite them to the, the Big Blue Button Conference there. Now, I do have some students who's like, oh, I can't get to the Big Blue Button Conference on the phone. Well, guess what? I've told them, if they let me know, I can send them the invite uh, to the class session and they can actually access it from their phone. Although I tell them also that I think statistics merits like the whole touch screen. I think we're worthy of that. Okay. So that is inviting guests. And that's how, why it says guest here. When they get the invite, what they'll do is they'll see a screen. You've been invited. And then it prompts them to type their name in. And that's the name you see there. I prefer my students do not come in as guests. Now I've done it before when big blue button was running, but my, my class was running, but Schoology was down. So I was like, here we are, click on this. And they all came in as guests. All right. But here's the problem with that. Uh, so I can currently, by the way, this is how I've been taking attendance since day one. This takes a snapshot of every person in the room. So, um, but it's at a point in time. So it's not over the whole time. Okay. If you want over the whole time, you're going to want to look at the statistics from the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and click open on this. It just opens up a notepad. Where are you? There you are. And you can see, and the nice thing initially, it was only sorted by first name. Now, guests are always going to look kind of funny. They're always going to have that guest, which is why I prefer not to do that with my students when taking attendance. Um, don't mind for tutorials. All right. So you can see when it's sorted by last name, it will actually sort all of the students by last name. So typically I will do a save user names, update my attendance for everyone that's there. And then I might do it again later, just because, you know, you have some kids join you late in class. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is for attendance, um, for the public chat, I tend to use that as well. So let me show you. Oh, and one other thing I want to mention is that you can make these presentations downloadable to the uh, student. So presentation, you just make sure you click on that and you confirm. And so the student should be able to see some sort of way to download the presentation. So what was I talking about in public chat? Uh, my good news is share, share some good news. So I'm trying to get them to type into the chat um, for attendance. All right. So I will say, oh, all they have to do is just type in hi and then their name comes up and that gives me something to search in case my save username missed it. Now, 
So I have three systems to check attendance when I'm going through it. So I'll go through the save usernames. If I don't see them, it's possible they got disconnected. All right. I'll look for their name in the user chat. If I don't see it there, then I'm like, hmm, maybe they didn't show up. Or, but some of them will forget to type hi. And so usually it's about two hours later, the recording will post. And I can check the recording and see who was logged in. And it'll actually show me start and stop. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So my point is, is this little piece right here on every presentation I put this for class, please type hi or your name to, uh, for attendance. Okay. And it's, it's really helped out. So definitely recommend it. What else were we going over? Uh, save usernames. Oh, private messaging. So let's say uh, Overman Surface Go has been a very naughty student. I'm still missing unit test, unit D test from you. I'm, you know, I'm being a little, when can you make, when can you make it up? Okay. This is one of my favorite things about big blue button is that I can private chat. Cause you know, some of those kids they're slippery and you can't get a hold of them. So what happens on here is I now have a little red notification that I have a private chat, all right? The other students can't see the chat. The only person who can see it is the person I private chat. And say, I'm sorry, Mrs. Overman. I'll come in Tuesday. You know what I mean. So they can message me back and you can see it right there. And you can see that it briefly flashed red. So if I have public chat here and they do another private chat with me, right? You can see that there's a little icon. Now, uh, one disadvantage, you know, when I have kids testing or whatever, a lot of times they will private chat me for um, they're either having trouble logging on or they need a little help or they have a question about something on the test, but they don't want to be broadcasting it with the whole group. I'll even have students private chat with me just during a lesson, which is great because then they don't feel like they're asking in front of the whole class. So I love private chat. If you have several private chats going on, they're going to start to slide under this notes section and you won't see everyone. So one thing you can do is you can, uh, should be here. Let me close that. Ah, that did it. There's a, actually, so that just putting the X on it, closed it out. There's also a way to clear your private chat. So see how you see clear. And this is worse for the public. You can also make a copy of the chats that you need. Uh, for me, I might make a copy and, well, it's just going to save it to a, a board. So if I wanted to, it would just, here, I'm just pasting it in. See how it's, ah, there you go. There's a copy of the chat. Let me see what happens there. Let's see what happened. Be sure to, if not already, well, oh, okay. So apparently that's part of the uh, chat, right? And Overman Surface Go said hi. So you can actually make a copy of it if you want to check it for attendance. Uh, and again, that's how to clear chats. And I'll clear the chats there. And there you go. This is very handy also in tutoring because a lot of my students like to type. They don't want to use their voice. And um, they might be typing about, you know, oh, I failed this test. And so one thing when that student's left the session, because, you know, they just tend to drop in. I rarely have more than one in there at a time. Um, I can clear the chat without having to start a new session and nobody else can see it. Now, if your session is being recorded, speaking of chat, it will record all public chat going on at that time. So that's another reason to use private chat for anything that's more grade sensitive or, you know, uh, something going on with a kiddo, that sort of thing. One last comment I wanted to add is if we have a long chat history here, right? You know, whatever's going on and, you know, you'll be pasting in links or something for them to share applets, whatever, uh, videos. The nice thing that I like about the uh, big blue button is you can see prior chats before you entered the room. So if a student comes in late, I don't have to technically repaste all that in. And actually another thought, and I haven't just started using it too much, is this shared notes section. 
in theory, I could actually put a bunch of links in here as well. Um, but I haven't really been playing with that because I've been able to type them in the chats. Who knows? I'll let you know how that goes.